Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office. In this video, we are going to be doing a very detailed El Nino update as of May 31st, 2023. I did have some computer rendering problems, as I mentioned in my discussion yesterday on my community post. Those have been resolved, and this video will be released this afternoon. So without further ado, let's get started and looking at our Enzo update here presented by the Climate Prediction Center or the NCEP. And this is as of May 30th. We have some big um, detail updates to talk about. So let's get started. So um, as of right now, we do have an El Nino watch. That's what has been happening over the last month or so. They have declared an El Nino watch. We are looking at sea surface temperatures near to above average across most of the Pacific Ocean, and there is a greater than 90% chance that we are going to have a El Nino persisting into the Northern Hemisphere winter. So that means El Nino will be impacting our weather pattern this winter. Um, recent evaluation of equatorial Pacific sea surface temperature departures, so as you all know there has been some significant warming over the last few months here, especially from about March all the way until now. Really warm water um, that has really developed. Now, as you know, these are timelines here on the left side. So June of 2022 is up here. Then you got May of 2022 is here. Then you got April and then you got May of 2023. So we can see as we go through the period here, that warming has really been pronounced anywhere between about 1 to 3 Celsius above normal in the Nino 1 plus 2 region. So let's go forward here and let's look at our Nino region sea surface temperature departures recent evaluation. So I mentioned this in previous El Nino updates. These different boxes right here mean different regions. So the 1 plus 2 region is here in this white box. You got the El Nino 3 region, which is the red box that you see right here. All right. The El Nino 3.4 region is this black box right here. And then we got our El Nino 4 region that is over here this is in yellow so these different regions mean different areas that they monitor for the development of an el nino la nina or neutral so in this case we are looking at um still a high-end neutral to low-end um el nino this has been fluctuating a little bit on average based on our my recent sea surface temperature departures we're probably looking at a weak El Nino at the very most right now, anywhere between 0.5 to 0.9 Celsius in the Nino 3.4 region, but very warm still. The El Nino 1 plus 2 region, very warm, 2 Celsius above normal, so that is pretty significant. And when that makes its way further westward into the Nino 3 and 3.4 region, it usually means we are going to have a moderate to strong El Nino. So we can see the four regions have been above normal over the last, say, month and a half to two months, which is a sign that El Nino is coming. And those are the departures in the last, um, these weekly averages. So sea surface de uh, departures here, another way to look at this in the last four weeks on average has been like so. We have had this really warm look to the El Nino or to the Enzo which usually indicates we have an El Nino developing. A little bit of a cold PDO kind of lingering across the west coast of California near Baja, California. That should eventually erode away over the next month or so. So we're just going to fast forward this and we're going to be looking at our central and eastern Pacific upper ocean heat content here. This has leveled off a little bit, but still running far above normal for this time of the year. I mean, for mid-May, late May, um, anywhere between 0 0.9 to 1.2 uh, Celsius above normal, our upper ocean heat content anomaly is quite significant here. Um, the higher this is, the more upper ocean heat content you have below the surface of the ocean. When it's in blue, that usually means we're looking at a La Nina. 
uh, below average heat content in the Central and Eastern Pacific Ocean. So this gives us an idea of what we're seeing out there right now as far as our heat content. So we're just gonna fast forward this. I have more details in the other slides that I would like to show you all so this video doesn't end up being too long. Um, is that we have had more Kelvin waves, so a lot more of this warming that has really taken place recently since April and May in the Central and Eastern Pacific with these dotted lines which indicate Kelvin waves that have been propagating uh, eastward with time. Uh, no more La Nina, no more um, downwelling or, or upwelling of cooler water over the eastern. It is now being replaced by downwelling of warm, new, uh, warm water over the equatorial Pacific. So when we take a look at our trade winds, um, trade winds have been fairly light. They've been kind of back and forth, usually represented by the MJO or the Madden Julian Oscillation. So when we have these red and orange colors, this usually indicates that our trade winds are weaker. When we get these blue colors, like over here, like last year in February, January 2023, that represents, um, actually, no, this was recent. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. This is this year. Um, that represents stronger than normal trade winds. That happened back in January. So when we see these blue colors, that indicates stronger than normal trade winds. So let's go into the next couple of slide here. Let's go to this. Um, as of again, this month, departures are negative 0.2 Celsius. And you guys might be wondering what, like what, what that doesn't add up. These are the three month blended mean averages. Okay. So it's probably going to take like three or four more of these boxes to be filled in for a El Nino to be declared in other words so we have to see these numbers overall come up and they're going to be filling these in at the beginning of each month so I'm curious to see with what the next box is going to show maybe 0.2 or 0.3 above normal instead of negatives right so it'd be interesting I can't wait for them to update that probably in the next few days or so in early June speaking of that this is the last day of May Happy early June, folks, that are watching this video back in the Western Pacific. So there is a 90% chance, even 95% chance, that El Nino will be the case for this winter time. Late fall, early winter. That means, again, the chances of that are very high. All right. Um, let's go. And yeah, that's with the PowerPoint. Let's take a look now at other things. Okay. So if you're just here for the PowerPoint, I'm sorry, but we do need to take a look at more detailed analysis of what's leading to this, right? What are we actually seeing right now as far as El Nino goes, right? So first of all, our first pit stop will be our Southern Oscillation Index, okay? This is the pressure difference between the Central Pacific over Tahiti and the Western Pacific or Indonesia, Indian Ocean, uh, where you have Darwin, Australia, okay? So when this is negative, you get higher pressure over Darwin, Australia overall, and you get lower than normal pressure, uh, sea level pressure over Tahiti, which is in the Central Pacific. So this is taken a big crash, I would say. <laughs> I think everyone could agree with me on that. I mean, at the beginning of May, the average was 0.63, okay, in the last 30 days at the time. And look at this. This is just taken a big tumble for its word. I mean, look at this. We're down to negative 16.18. That is more than sufficient for an El Nino. Just for reference, you need negative 7, which is right here. Okay, this black line that I drew, um, drew up here is what you need for a threshold of El Nino. We're definitely going to hit that by June. There is no doubt about it. Our 90-day average is awfully close. Literally, I think in the next... Uh, update here that they update this daily at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I'm very sure this is going to be negative 7 or negative 6.95 or something like that, which is very close or at El Nino thresholds in a 90-day average. And so what I'm telling you all is we're definitely, we're, there's no doubt about it. There is no La Nina. There's no neutral. This is straight towards El Nino right now. 
which is quite remarkable. Uh, negative 16.18 right now on the 30 day and negative 6.48 on the 90 day. And just for reference, uh, we can see in March, it was negative 1.78 in the last 90 days. And then it went to negative uh, 1.20 in the 90 day average. And then look at this um negative 15 actually 30 day averages sorry negative 15.26 so a huge drop from april into may which really illustrates we're definitely going to have an el nino there's no doubt and the daily contribution here is negative 29.32 now something that really caught my attention is when we look at the um the daily contribution we went down to negative 64.63. That is the third or fourth lowest negative SOI index daily ever recorded. Uh, I can't remember a time when it was this low. So that is pretty, pretty significant. I mean, actually, if we go and look at that, it was 1,009 millibars over Tahiti, 1,015 or almost 1,016 millibars over Darwin. So that is a huge difference. The difference of six millibars between those two locations, which really led to a negative 64. So really, really negative. And it's really negative again. Again, negative 30. And that usually indicates our trade winds are weaker than average. And this El Nino is just going to continue to continue to grow pretty quickly. So this is the latest current map. This is from yesterday. These are delayed by a day, but it gives us an illustration with how quick this El Nino is growing. And we can see here lots of two Celsius isotherm anomalies right here. Um, literally from about 100 degree west longitude all the way over towards about 140 degree west longitude, anywhere between about two to 2.5 Celsius above the long-term average. That is significant. There is even a little bit of anomalous um, waters here right along the Peru coast. They're still running four and five Celsius above normal. That is absolutely significant. And that usually illustrates that we are going to have a pretty impactful El Nino. It's going to strengthen even more. And we're only in late May, the last day of May. We're going into June tomorrow. And it's already this strong. I can't look back to see how strong this actually is. But I'm sure it definitely is stronger than 1982-83 at this given time frame. And it is stronger than 1997 and 98 at this given time frame. So we're running a little bit ahead of schedule. We're running on par with the El Nino of 2015 and 2016. All right, so we're not any warmer than that or any cooler than that. We're about the same, which really means we're going to probably have a very strong El Nino by um, this fall and winter. Also, the Atlantic is really warm too, anywhere between about a degree to two degrees above normal. So here's a movie illustrating um, just how this has progressed. Look very closely. Take note of these waters here. If this is, okay, there it is. Um, it cools down a little bit. Okay, we thought well, maybe it's not going to develop as quick, and then look at now it really um hits the hits the fan here pretty quickly. Um, these waters do um are not as significantly above normal, um, but they are now you can see right here recently a huge upwelling of warm water has occurred. So yeah, this is a big deal. We're gonna keep an eye on this uh, with time because um of course El Nino is going to influence our weather pattern this coming winter. So as we do take a look here at our um, subsurface temperatures here, I wanted to show you all this. This is showing us are the uh, waters below the surface of the ocean, are they above normal, are they cooler than normal? In simple words, and in this case, <laughs> it's well above normal. I mean, look at the darkest red colors. That's four and five Celsius above normal. It's still there. It's not giving up at all. So if that makes its way to the surface, it is definitely going to be a El Nino and a half. And we're going to watch the waters over here towards kind of about 150 meters below the surface. But this is filling in quite nicely all this kind of this pool of water here. And that's about a degree and a half Celsius above normal. And so this is going to work its way to the surface in the next couple of months. And it's usually going to um, indicate to us 
we're going to have an El Nino. So equatorial temperatures, uh, these are the actual sea surface temperatures of thermocline index. And yeah, there's still this water moving towards the east. Um, the trade winds have been weaker than average over a long period. And that's allowed this water to slosh eastward. And we can see that right here. Even um, the 28 uh, Celsius line is really moving quickly. I mean, it's already almost to 120 degrees west longitude, um, and it's going to continue to move further east. Once that 28 Celsius completely encircles this area, we're usually going to have a very strong El Nino in place by the fall. All right, so now let's take a look here at our national or our NOAA graphic here of the CFS V2 forecast Nino 3.4 index. We can clearly see some of the models, the ensembles are still indicating this could make a run for a 2.5 Celsius on the high end, on the low end, about 1.7. Just to get this straight, um, most of the ensembles here are already indicating we are going to have a very strong El Nino by, say, September, by October, November, December, and January, which, again, will really influence our weather pattern. We're not looking at a very dry mega drought for the West. We're looking at a lot of rainfall, hopefully for the winter time. I know we've gotten through so much rain this winter time, and people are like, we need some dry weather this next winter. You don't. You take it when you can get it because there might be those times where we get into another mega drought. And so when we look at the pattern here, um, clearly um, our precipitation forecast uh, for the winter months, especially actually let's do the three month mean. We can see precipitation forecast for December, January and February. Definitely above average for California, the deep south, and the southeast here. Above normal, likely below average for the northwest, and also for the Great Lakes, which would be unfortunate news for Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, possibly for Oregon and Washington. More fires, more droughts. You guys need rain. You guys need rain up in those areas. But unfortunately, it's probably going to be a hard ship type winter for those that are wondering. But look at this. Above normal precipitation for the Midwest and the Deep South across the West Coast of California, including for the Southeast. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's El Nino update for May 31st, 2023. I'm glad you all are so excited to see this video. Make sure you please share it with your family and friends on social media. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I will be sure I have a video out this coming Monday um, for next week. Our first June El Nino update. That will probably be my last one of the season since we know what's going on with El Nino. Maybe I'll surprise you guys. But if you guys want more of these updates, please consider sharing, liking, and subscribing. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather content.